Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, whose forgiveness is sure and whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Together, let us honestly and humbly confess that we have not lived as God desires. Loving and forgiving God, we confess that we are held captive by sin, in spite of our best efforts, we have gone astray. We have not welcomed the stranger. We have not loved our neighbor. We have not been Christ to one another. Restore us, O God. Wake us up and turn us from our sin. Renew us each day in the light of Christ. Amen. People of God, hear this glad news. By God's endless grace, your sins are forgiven and you are free free from all that holds you back, and free to live in the peaceable realm of God. May you be strengthened in God's love, comforted by Christ's peace, and accompanied with the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen.
The fulfillment of God's promises were ultimately to be displayed in a kingdom founded on love. I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. With my mouth I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. The darkness shall turn to dawning and the dawning to noonday bright. And Christ's great kingdom shall come to earth, the kingdom of love and light. Together we pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. With your abundant grace and might, free us from the sin that would obstruct your mercy, that willingly we may bear your redeeming love to all the world. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from 2 Samuel, the seventh chapter. Now when the king was settled in his house, and the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies around him, the king said to the prophet Nathan, See now, I am living in a house of cedar, but the ark of God stays in a tent. Nathan said to the king, Go, do all that you have in mind, for the Lord is with you. But that same night the word of the Lord came to Nathan, Go and tell my servant David. Thus says the Lord, You are the one to build me a house to live in. I have not lived in a house since the day I brought up the people of Israel from Egypt to this day. But I have been moving about in a tent and a tabernacle. Wherever I have moved about among all the people of Israel, did I ever speak a word with any of the tribal leaders of Israel? whom I commanded to shepherd my, my people Israel, saying, Why have you not built me a house of cedar? Now, therefore, thus you shall say to my servant David, Thus says the Lord of hosts, I took you from the pasture, from following the sheep, to be prince over my people Israel, and I have been with you wherever you went and have cut off all your enemies from before you, and I will make, you, make for you a great name, like the name of the great ones of the earth. And I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant them so that they may live in their own place and be disturbed no more. And evildoers shall inflict them no more, as formerly from the time that I appointed judges over my people Israel, and I will give you rest from all your enemies. Moreover, the Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Your house and your kingdom shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. Psalm 89, 1 through 4, 19 through 26. Your love, O Lord, forever will I sing. From age to age my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. For I am persuaded that your steadfast love is established forever. You have set your faithfulness firmly in the heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen one, I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. I will establish your line forever and preserve your throne for all generations. You spoke once in a vision and said to your faithful people, I have set the crown upon a warrior and have exalted one chosen out of the people. 
I have found David, my servant. With my holy oil, I have anointed him. My hand will hold him fast. My arm will make him strong. No enemy shall deceive him, nor shall the wicked bring him down. I will crush his foes before him and strike down those who hate him. My faithfulness and steadfast love are with him, and he shall be victorious through my name. I will set his hand on the sea and his right hand on the rivers. He will say to me, you are my father, my God, and the rock of my salvation. The second reading is from Romans, the 16th chapter. Now to God, who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but is now disclosed, and through the prophetic writings, is made known to all the Gentiles, according to the command of the eternal God, to bring about the obedience of faith to the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. The third reading is from the first John, the fourth chapter. Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God 
for God is love. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him, and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and do testify that the Father has sent his Son as the Savior of the world. God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God, and they abide in God. So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. Well, welcome here to worship this morning. Uh, to here today as I'm recording, it is a beautiful uh, day uh, with the sun shining, no wind blowing, and the sound of my neighbors doing their neighborly things here today. Everybody out here just enjoying a little bit of time uh, here with this gift of a couple of nice days in a row. I couldn't help but to come out here and record this sermon here for this morning uh, using this beautiful sun. It might be messing with the shot a little bit, but you know, I got to tell you, it is worth it because it is gorgeous. What a gift to be surrounded by the light of God in Christ here on this beautiful day. And so uh, throughout Advent this year, we're going to be celebrating by exploring four different themes. We're going to each week explore hope, love, joy, and peace. Uh, each of these, as we continue to make our way through this time of Advent, through this time of preparing for the return of Christ. Last week, we talked about hope, and we talked about how uh, each and every week we're given an opportunity, a, a choice to make. We can choose to live our lives and see the world through a lens of despair, or we can choose to call on God to be who God is and remember who God has been and live in the hope and knowing that God will continue to be faithful as he has been throughout our days. This week, we're going to explore the theme of love. And if hope trusts in the promises of a God who has made them and who keeps them, one of those promises that God has made for us is the promise of his abiding and steadfast love in Christ. And this is a promise that dates back to the Old Testament. And we heard it this morning from our second Samuel reading, and it sounds like this. The Lord declares to you that the Lord will make you a house. Your house will be your kingdom, and it shall be made sure forever before me. Your throne shall be established forever. This is a promise of an eternal lineage, not necessarily a, a house, a dwelling place, but instead a, a, a line, a, a genealogy, right? A family line that will remain forever. God is establishing this line, eternal line. In the second uh, reading today from the psalm, from Psalm 89, we get to hear what this promise did in the life of David. And it said, I will sing of your steadfast love, O Lord, forever. With my mouth, I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations. So as long as God has made this promise to establish and God continues to follow through, then the reaction, the, the, the cause in us then is to praise God, to uplift our, our, our joyfulness in song. I will proclaim your faithfulness to all generations, a handing on of this work of God to the generations that follow. This morning, we're going to be blessed by the music of our musicians here, of Jason and Greta Wright, and of all of the messengers who will be bringing us music as well in the service to come. And there are two songs that I like to uplift today from the service, and, and more importantly, a couple of places in each of those songs that talk about this theme of love. One of them's coming up here at the end of the service, and that's from the messengers. It's called Amazing Love. There's this verse in there that says, I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted because you were condemned. God's love for the world brought forgiveness and a radical welcome for all. And God's love has a name. 
it's Jesus. In fact, another song in our, in our service today, which we heard earlier from Jason and Greta Wright, is called Love Has Come. And there are three verses in that song that speak to this love of God in Christ. The first one is, love is the light in the darkness. It talks all about that theme we explored last week about hope. The second one is, love is born. Love has been made flesh. Jesus is love made flesh. Jesus is God incarnate. And then the third verse is about how this love of God that's promised to us is everlasting. And it sets us free. Free that leads us to what David did in the psalm today to, to approach God in praise and worship. And, and it encourages us to step outside and serve the neighbor as the face of love in the world. Because God's love has a name and it's Jesus. So what does this love look like? Advent is a time of preparing our hearts to, to become aware, to see what this love looks like. It's a time for us to, first of all, though, recognize our own brokenness and the need for God's grace, for this love made flesh. It's a time for us to recognize what God's forgiveness is and, and who it's for, that it's complete, that there's no part of us that doesn't changed and forgiven by God's grace in Christ, and that it's completely free and unearned. It's a gift. Advent also gives us a chance to recognize God's radical welcome given to all. Uh, in John 3, 16, we hear, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. For God so loved that he gave. Who did God love? The world. Not just part of it. And actually, that, that word can be translated to all of creation, to all of the cosmos, to everything that God created. God sent his love for everything and for everyone. Advent is also a time for us to remember that God's love has already been here, and it's already here. And that's a love that expands our capacity to be able to, to see the good in others or to, to see our own worthiness. Our, it expands our capacity to see and, and, and recognize the need in the world. And it expands our capacity to share that love with others. It widens our heart. It opens our hearts even bigger when we can see how that love works. So what does God's love look like? Well, we encounter that question in the third reading today from 1 John chapter 4. And in verse 11, it says, Beloved, since God loved us so much, we ought to love one another. God's love looks like you and me loving our neighbors. And it keeps going from there. A little further on in that passage in verse 16, it says, God is love and those who abide in love abide in God and God abides in them. So what does this love look like? Well, it looks like you and me. It's the church. It's the body of Christ in the world. It, is it a church building? Is that where God's love resides? No, it says God's love abides in you and me. That word abide means that we have a mobile God with us. It's, it's the way that God tabernacled with the people out there wandering in the wilderness. Yes, we encounter God inside the four walls of our church building, but God's love is meant to be carried with us out into the world, into the places where we live and work, in the places where we encounter others out there in our everyday lives. God's love is a love that's on the move. It's the church out there in the world proclaiming the gospel through word and deed, serving the neighbor in love, and embodying the grace of God in Christ to the world. At this time, I'd like to close with a prayer. And this prayer is from a devotional from Augsburg Fortress called, I Wonder As I Wander. Uh, it's a prayer that talks about the way that this love of God in Christ works in our lives, that it is a generous and just a bountiful gift of God that not only is lavished upon us, but it's a gift that goes to work on our hearts to expand our capacity to see that we are worthy of this love, to see that others are worthy of this love, and it expands the capacity of our hearts not only to receive that love, but also to share it. And so I invite you to join me now as we pray. Let us pray. O oh God, you surprise us with your abundance and pour out your love in extravagant ways. 
Set us free from all that holds us back from celebrating and sharing your love and your grace. In your Son's name we pray. Amen. May the light of Christ continue to shine with hope through the darkness in your life. And may this same love of God in Christ accompany you this week and the weeks ahead as we continue to prepare our hearts and minds to encounter the inbreaking of this amazing grace of God in Jesus here in just a few weeks. God's blessings to you all this week. Amen. We confess our faith together to the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God of power and might, fulfill your promise and come quickly to this weary world. Please respond to hear us, O God, with your mercy is great. Let us pray. Gracious God, all generations call you blessed. In this holy season, we pray for our neighbors of other denominations and faiths. Inspire the faith of their people, cultivate understanding among us, and strengthen us in love and service to our community. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Creator God, you scatter the proud. Everything we have belongs first to you. Bless and protect seas, mountains, plains, forests, skies, and soils that surround us. Give us humility as we tend them. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Righteous God, you humble the powerful and lift up the lowly. 
we pray for the leaders of all nations, that they amplify the voices of people in need. Guide all people entrusted with your leadership to create societies in which everyone can flourish. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Compassionate God, you fill the hungry with good things and send the rich away empty. Nourish those who lack access to adequate food and nutrition. Bless the work of advocates, community organizers, and food pantries. Encourage others to provide for their neighbors in need. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Healing God, you pour out mercy to all who cry to you. Surround everyone in need of healing in body, mind, or spirit with your tender presence. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Eternal God, you are faithful to the promises you made to our forebears. We give thanks for the ministry of Catherine von Bora, Luther, and other ancestors who organized, planned, dreamed, encouraged, and reached out as they served you. We give thanks for the bold leadership of female leaders in our own time. Inspire others through their steadfast witness. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, in whose name we pray. Amen. Please join me at this time as we give thanks for the ways that God has provided for us, not only in the gifts that we have to share, but also in the hope that God abundantly gives us here during this time of Advent. Let us pray. Generous God, you have created all that is, and you provide for us in every season. Bless all that we offer, that through these gifts the world will receive your blessing. In the name of Jesus, Emmanuel, we pray. Amen. At this time, we are going to share communion together. In order to do that, you're going to have to go and grab a piece of bread and a small cup of wine or grape juice in your homes and come back prepared to share in this the Lord's Supper.
Welcome back. We share now in the Lord's Supper. When we gather together, we remember that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it to his disciples to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Even as we watch and wait, Christ is here. Come, eat and drink. We invite you at this time to share communion in your homes as I present the elements here in our, in our sanctuary. To those who are gathered in your home, this is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious and abundant God, you have done great things for us, and we rejoice. In this bread and cup, you give us life forever. In your boundless mercy, strengthen us and open our hearts to the world's need, all for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Some announcements for the day. Just a reminder that we will continue to worship here in our virtual worship space on Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. via Facebook. You can join us for an interactive worship service at 10 a.m. via Zoom. And then on Wednesday evening, we will be uh, having worship uh, through the service of Holden Evening Prayer. You can find that service at 6.30 p.m. on Wednesday evenings, also on our Facebook page. We are having our regular Bible studies continue. Women of Faith meets on Thursday mornings at 9.30 a.m. We have uh, a new Bible study that's happening through Advent called The Characters of Christmas at 10.30 a.m. And then on Thursday evenings at 7 p.m., we invite you to come be a part of Bible and Brew, an informal conversation about faith and life. Also happening here throughout Advent, we invite you to come and attend one of our Advent drive through blessings at St. John's. So come and get a weekly devotion from us. You can drop off an offering for the week, uh, receive a prayer from uh, one of our members of our pastoral or program staff to share communion together and just enjoy a little bit of fellowship. Those blessings will take place on Sunday mornings from 8 to 9 a.m. and then again from 11.30 a.m. until 12.30 p.m. Monday mornings from 11 a.m. until noon. And then we have two on Wednesday evenings from 3 to 4.30 p.m. and from 5.30 to 6.30 p.m. Come on up to the property, drive up into the south side of the building there, into our drive-up area, and we will be so blessed to spend time with you sharing a little bit of holy space together. Be on the lookout for more information to come about Christmas Eve services here in the next couple of days. Our COVID-19 task force is meeting this evening, uh, Sunday, December 6th. Council is meeting on Tuesday, December 8th. And we'll have some information about decisions for our worship services for the weeks ahead. Please be on the lookout for that on our Facebook page and through our YouTube channel as well. A special thanks to our Altar Guild members Thank you for the ways that you have adorned the chancel with the beauty of God in Christ, the beauty that we experience here in this season of Advent. We're so grateful for the gifts of your time and your talents. 
our congregation and our community want to say thanks to you for sharing those gifts with us during this season as we make our hearts ready for what's to come. Receive this blessing. The creator of the stars, bless your advent waiting. The long expected savior, fill you with love. The unexpected spirit, guide your journey, now and forever. Amen. Prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God.